Art style. Cool artists have it, everybody wants it, but what is art style and how do we even find it? Hi, this is Derriter Arts and in this video I'm gonna be reflecting and traveling back through time to figure out how I personally found my own art style and in a way give some ideas on how you could find yours. So to begin with, what is art style? In essence it's the result of how an artist portrays and crafts their own piece to express their vision. A creation where method, process, and ideas are combined. Like how an artist uses color, employs perspective, or makes composition. Just to give a few examples. Some artists have very dull colors, some paint in very vibrant colors. Some artists produce very surreal, fantastical, and otherworldly paintings whereas others may simply be capturing real life. Style is one's own take, a personal method or process in the creation of a piece, which results in variation, which is why a painting of a portrait, for example, will be different from painter to painter. Even a photograph of a person is different from photographer to photographer, because they have a variation in their vision, which affects their methods and process in the creation of art resulting in a style. Now then, how is art style found? Is it something that comes naturally? Is it a methodology that you have to meticulously learn? In many ways, it's either, both, or something else entirely. There is no defined method on how someone finds their own art style. Some are even content in merely imitating life, or their favorite artist's style, and that is very much welcomed with an art journey of their own. Now, for me and those who are interested in developing their own art style, even that is not a well-defined journey. I, for example, basically went through all this time trying to study and get decent at realistic, semi-realistic drawings and paintings just so that I could appreciate and draw cartoons. Hell yeah. Best art journey ever. Although, that's not completely the case, as I still practice and study particularly traditional styles on a consistent basis. To be transparent, I've went through and am still going through developing and honing multiple styles. But in this video, I will be focusing on my comic style in particular, as this is something that has been with me since the very beginning, and most importantly, has been my vision in storytelling. So sit back and enjoy, preferably listening, as I go through my journey and along the way give you some ideas on how you too could develop your own art style. Like many, if not all, I believe it all begins in drawing from inspiration. When I was young and did art for fun for the most part, I had this underlying frustration with my art. Something was wrong with it. Not that I was concerned with creating the best thing, but just the output did not match with my vision. I was already drawing stylized cartoons as a kid, that's kind of what I wanted at that time, but I wanted to achieve art like that of Ben 10, Dragon Fable, and AQ Worlds, or more specifically Miltonius' art, which was a big inspiration back then and to some degree, until now. Going back to Ben 10 though, not only did that cartoon feature, well, cartoons, in certain sequences and frames of the show, they would shift the art style into highly rendered static paintings which blew me away. And like Miltonius who did both simple and painterly renderings of his art. The shifting from simple to complex art styles made for a cool storytelling method or just an interesting dynamic to play with. Which other prevalent examples would include Spongebob, Flapjack, Samurai Jack, Chowder, and other cartoons around the 2000s and 2010s? Even Flash games, the consistently inconsistent graphic styles would intrigue me. Like especially classic Adventure Quest, where the new styles would often clash with the preserved old styles, which was charming rather than annoying. The contrast from simple cartoon to painterly art inspired me, and from around that point, I knew this was the kind of art I wanted to pursue. And this experience, I would say, is a component in developing one's own art style. That is, drawing from inspiration. But if we are to achieve a style that is truly our own, 
not necessarily original since that's kind of impossible, but as our own as it could be, then we should know the rules before breaking them. So there I was, doing my thing, emulating from my inspirations and all. But then my drawings were, you know, not really matching up to my vision. I was still learning, that was quite evident, but I made the mistake of trying to do things without strong and sturdy foundation, exaggerating, stylizing, or simplifying things without actually knowing the basics. Essentially, I avoided studying the fundamentals, because, you know, why should I stress over a hobby? Which is a big mistake. I relied heavily on digital tools because I thought it would do the job for me. It didn't. And I would get frustrated when I saw someone getting better than me and confused why I wasn't. Again, I was painting and drawing a certain thing, but without studying or learning the basics that was foundational into fully realizing what I wanted to make. Treating art essentially as just a hobby despite clearly having a desired project and goal in mind, which needed the study and foundation in the first place. I treated it as something below and unimportant which led to taking no action and making no effort, leading to an underdeveloped skill in drawing and painting where half the time I didn't know what I was doing. Now, for people who do it for fun, that's kind of alright, but for me, and others who want to achieve a specific goal of creating a piece or project from our vision, we need to do something about that. But it was that very frustration and ignorance that soon erupted into me finally realizing my mistakes and taking charge. Going back to the basics and went through my drawing art, where I studied the fundamentals, experimented, grew, and eventually began to be able to do the things I thought I could never achieve, like anatomy, realism, landscapes, and the like. But over the years, while the study and progress of my art journey was fulfilling, I knew I couldn't just keep copying pictures or making fan art as much as I got good with them. I needed to go back to why I went through all this, to make the art and tell a story, the kind that was in my vision all those years ago. And in that space of overcoming struggle and making a choice after a couple years of practice, I decided to finally break the rules, as they say, doing the basics then making them my own. And so I made my first completed comic, Dream Journal, which leads me to my next point, and that is defining your goals. And so defining your goals, what's the direction, the point, or purpose of your art? Are you doing it for fun, a hobby, or a project, maybe a business? Are you doing cartoons, realistic illustrations, or something else? In developing one's own art style, when you're kind of done with the basics and have learned a great deal of foundation, now is the time to take the road less traveled, to branch off from the main path. During my first completed webcomic, Dream Journal, my goal of a simple, stylized cartoon was beginning to form. It wasn't a fully realized style, not yet. Reviewing it, I just simply simplified my current drawing process that I used in my studies which resulted in a sort of midway between sketch and fully rendered piece that created an inkable line art, which I would color flatly. As for painterly illustrations, I chose certain panels and painted over them, beginning to understand how to turn simple stylized drawings to fully rendered painterly illustrations just like the shows I watched and games I played when I was younger. It was the next comic that grounded all of that and I would argue that this was the moment I found my art style by the end of making it. And that comic was... The Fairy Princess. For this, I started off doing the uncanny end at the midway point of my drawing process, once again. But during some technical difficulties, when I made the first few pages, because I wanted to just keep the pencils as line art, I needed them stronger, darker, and bolder hence creating these geometric shapes rather than smooth lines and detail. It was like rotoscoping my sketch into solid sculpted rocks that represented figures. It made for a method of coloring and shading that was kind of weird, but it looked and felt right. And as the comic went on, I honed the process, refining my methods and eventually created what I would come to know as my style. My blocky and fluid cartoons. 
a culmination of struggles, studies, and hope. What to others may look upon and see silly drawings, to me is a testament of overcoming struggle and finding myself. And so, I'm proud of these guys, and while not yet perfect, I am grateful every day for being able to work at it. But the story's not yet done. What about my painterly illustrations? While I have grounded my stylized cartoon style, there was still the fully rendered painterly illustrations. Now I will say that it is tied to my own problems at this moment, as both with my watercolor and digital painting, while I am fairly proficient, although not a master or anything, at painting studies and fan art, when it comes to painting originals, I find that my rendering and colors do need some work until they are up to par with the former. While today they are somewhat presentable, back when I was making the Dream Journal and Fairy Princess, turning stylized cartoons into 3D painterly illustrations, there was this process of overcoming the uncanny valley, because I usually worked with something realistic or semi-realistic when doing painterly illustrations, and turning a very simplified drawing to something akin to a sculpture was quite the work, because I would often bounce from too two-dimensional to too uncanny. But over time, I did it. And now, especially with my current comic, Son of the Slayer, there are moments in the pages where it occasionally turns to a spread or page with fully rendered digital art. And right now, for the second half of the comic, I'm actually experimenting with watercolor painting in the style of the comic. So I'm kind of going on a little adventure mishmashing my various art styles and mediums. In any case, I kind of did it. I reached the point of being able to tell stories with both simple cartoons and comics and epic looking paintings. But of course, there will always be room for improvement. And maybe one day, I'll look back on this and cringe. So that's the end. To summarize, finding one's own art style begins from inspiration or observation. The two can be intertwined. Then there's learning the basics, knowing the rules before breaking them. Once that is done with, you are then able to make art from your own vision, drawn from inspiration or observation, with a strong backbone that allows you to make what you intended to. Now, I don't mean to put all this heavy load of studying and practicing through many years onto anyone. I even only achieved my art style because of a limit in my situation, because I cheaped out on a scanner and ink to save what little money I had. You out there could have gone a different route entirely, and so this is just my experience, and you should take it as you will, be it as something to think about. Studying and practicing as well does not need to be some kind of everyday Sigma male grind set, because for me, I can tell you with all honesty that I was just chilling when I did my studies, listening to music, documentaries, even eating food while drawing or painting. So even my point of studying the basics doesn't have to be grindy, stressful, or boring, but more so peaceful, relaxed, or meditative. And so I believe that would be all for today. Thank you for your time, and if you are pursuing a goal, be it an art, hobby, or a passion project, no matter what happens, no one can judge you for not having tried. So stay steadfast and have no fear. I hope you have a great day, and until then, see you.